and girls, I'm Mrs. Taylor. I really love reading books for fun. What's your favorite book? Wow, I haven't read all those books yet. I'm gonna have to go check some of those out of the library. When I go to school, my teachers ask me questions sometimes about the books that I read, and sometimes I don't know the answers, and that really makes me frustrated when that happens. Have you ever had that happen to you before? Yes. Well, today I have great news. Today we're going to learn a new reading strategy called QAR, and it's really going to help us become better readers. QAR stands for Question Answer Relationship. So, in a nutshell, not that kind of nutshell. QAR helps you understand different types of questions a little bit better. So when you're reading the question, you know exactly where to go back in the story to find the answer. And then you'll be able to understand the whole entire story just a little bit better. When I was your age, I remember my teacher asking me to read a story and to answer questions about it. The questions that she asked me usually started with one of the five W question words. Who, what, when, where, and why. And the answers to those questions were right there in the story, and I really didn't have to think about it, and sometimes I even memorized the answers. But OMG, times have changed, and teachers really make us think about what the story is about. We have to go back in the story, find some clues, and still think about it some more to help us figure out the answer to the question. Okay, boys and girls, get ready to learn. I'm going to share with you the four different types of questions that you might hear when you're using the QAR reading comprehension strategy. How to answer right there questions. Oh, look over there. Man, that was so easy. Right there questions are questions that are answered in the story. Usually it's found in one place or one sentence. So after you read the question, go back in the story, find the answer to the question, highlight the answer with a highlighter, and then mark your answer choice down below. Then your teacher knows exactly what you're thinking. Mrs. Taylor has a pet dog. What kind of pet does Mrs. Taylor have? Pause the video and answer the question. That's right, Mrs. Taylor has a pet dog. Her name is Carly. Go back to the sentence in the story. Mrs. Taylor has a pet dog. Highlight the words pet dog because that's the type of pet that Mrs. Taylor has. Now you're proving your answer to the question. That's the easiest type of question out there. Finally, we're going to answer the question in a complete sentence. Mrs. Taylor has a pet dog. The second type of question you may be asked is called the think and search question. Let's see how many red birds we can find. Oh, there's one. Oh, and there's another. Oh, and there's a third bird right there. Do you see how I think and search? Boy, the answers to these questions might not be as easy to find. In a think and search question, your answers are found in different parts of the story. So you have to gather up all of that information and put it together so you can have meaning. For this example, we don't just have one sentence. We have a collection of sentences that when it's put together, it forms a paragraph. Notice how the paragraph is indented. Mrs. Taylor starts a little bit more to the right than in kindergarten. So we call it a paragraph. When you read a story, sometimes a question might ask you to go back to the text or to the passage, or in this case, the paragraph. Let's read it together. Mrs. Taylor loves to dance. When she was in kindergarten, she took ballet and danced in the Nutcracker. Then she quit dancing for a while. When she went to college, she took a jazz class. Finally, as an adult, she took a tap class at her daughter's dance studio. Dancing is so much fun. What three types of dance classes has Mrs. Taylor taken? Notice that I have to read all the way through to find the answer. Ballet is in the beginning of the paragraph, jazz is in the middle of the paragraph, and tap is at the end of the paragraph. We have to search to find the complete answer to the question. This takes a little bit more time than the first type of question. Pause the video and write down the three types of dance classes that Mrs. Taylor has taken. If you said that Mrs. Taylor has taken ballet, jazz, and tap dance classes, then you are correct. Notice how I went back in the paragraph and I highlighted the words ballet, jazz, and tap in yellow because those are the classes that she took. This is called highlighting and proving your answer. If you don't have a highlighter, you can also underline those words so that we can still prove your answer. 
The third type of question that we're going to go over today is called the author and you question. Other and you questions are based on information that the author writes down in the story, along with personal experiences that you have had in your life, which we call prior knowledge. Basically, the answers are not going to be right there. So you have to take what the author writes, along with your previous experiences that you've had on that topic, put it together, and then you can answer the question. Let's read the text together. We quickly put on our bathing suit and sunscreen. Then we grabbed a sand bucket so we could make a sand castle when we got there. I'm ready, Mom. Where are we getting ready to go? Pause the video and write down your answer. If you only highlighted the words bathing suit and sunscreen, you might think different things. You might think, well, I'm going to water country, USA, or hmm, I could go to the beach. We need more information to figure out which is the best answer. As I read through the passage one more time, I noticed the words sand bucket and sand castle, and I highlighted those words also. That helps me figure out that we're going to the beach and not to Water Country USA. Water Country USA doesn't have a place for us to build a sand castle. So our final answer reads, we are going to the beach. That's written in a complete sentence. I can answer that question because I've been to the beach before and did all those things before I left the house. Other new questions may be hard to answer because you have to gather clues and infer what is happening. And sometimes you have no prior knowledge of what's going on because you haven't experienced those events before. When this happens, just highlight the clues and your teacher can help you figure out the rest. And if it happens to be something that's for the grade, sometimes you just have to pick the best answer. The last type of question that we're going to discuss today is called on your own questions. When you are answering questions on your own, you have to read the passage, think about what the author is trying to tell you, and just try to figure out the answer. Find those clues though, and that will help your teacher understand exactly what you are thinking. Mrs. Taylor created this YouTube video for you about QAR. What does Mrs. Taylor hope that you do before you close out her video? Well, if you have watched YouTube videos, you know what they say. If you liked today's video, click on the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single adventure. If you said that Mrs. Taylor hopes that you like her video and subscribe to her channel before you close out her video, then you are correct. I highlighted the words YouTube video on there because I know from watching YouTube videos that that's usually what they ask you to do before, during, and after the video is over. Thanks for learning about QAR today. It's the first of many reading strategies that we're going to learn about this year. Until next time, keep on reading. Goodbye.